best man at all. We definitely have some weaknesses on there, especially on the T side as well. Perfect play style for Fnatic going into this one. If they turn up to the big stage, all guns blazing, could be very problematic for Astralis overall, I think. I absolutely, and not only that, you've got Olaf coming in with experience. He seems focused and ready, and we know Astralis famously have problems in semi-finals. Obviously, with Glaive on board, they want to overcome that, and yeah. Device especially. They highlighted him, everyone's been highlighting him. He's one in particular to be known to fall flat in these games. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, the first semi-final of the day. Astralis versus Fnatic, and what a map to kick it off. There will be Fnatic on the T side here. Four sets of armor, and little utility to be fair, but Dennis, he's got that Desert Eagle, so can be very powerful for these opening picks. He'll be towards B for now, but you can see, actually surprisingly, Astralis with a heavy A setup. That's normally going to be in a retake position. It's B that's got weaker presence there, and Glaze being headshot to kick things off. Hold toward the low HP, but Dennis actually hits the shot over top of Twist's shoulder. They push through, and he's looking for a luck shot through the garage door. But rotation's coming in. Playing a B retake is a risk. That's not something we normally see, oh. and it's not going to work out. It's such a tight position to get back into a five versus one, and Crims, he'll take down Dupree. This is the exact start Fnatic need, and they want on cash, and map they are also very good on. So just to elaborate on Matt's point there, the reason we describe cash is more of like a hybrid map. It has versatility to it. You can play it like Fnatic's kind of play style, working in the default units and actually just working picks, going in together as a five like they did just then. You don't have to have a diverse strap, though, to be good on this map, but it certainly can help as well. And allow you to find entrances into the map that weren't necessarily available for finding picks. I think we have a slight technical pause, so let's elaborate on that pistol a little bit more there. Desert Eagles and Glocks towards the B-bomb side. No utility really purchased whatsoever. Astralis actually with a heavy A presence. The reason I say that's normally less, well, less common than what we normally see, which is normally the A retake, is because that bomb site normally is a lot easier to retake than B was. And you can see an example of that, exactly what happened in that round. They couldn't really get back in towards B, couldn't find a single frag. As soon as Glade got a headshot at the start there, the retake was pretty much over. But we are back into it, and it's going to be 1-0 to Fnatic. I'd assume there'll be a force buy from Astralis going into round number two here. There is indeed, oh, interesting though, all five players have armor and upgraded pistols as well. Yeah, so. This to someone like Device as well, he wanted to keep his money a little bit stronger if they lose this, which is quite likely he won't have that all in the first gun round. Yeah, big problem. It's not like they get the injection or the early buy option on the CT side, so they've got to consider that, but obviously they feel confident in their firepower and the rifle game. It's going to be a pretty standard setup. This time they play off of the A site with a little bit of aggression toward middle. We know in the past on this map, former iterations of Fnatic love to take mid control. Yeah. But Zipix does fade off toward the A-site. Bomb dropped as well. Fnatic take no chances. They don't want to get anti eco in this situation. They're just going to sit back and hold for picks. Still a minute and 26 to work with. I haven't even really peaked, to be fair. They're not even boosted up inside a little, but Crimson side of the door is waiting for information from A-Main, and Disco's heading that direction. It's Olaf. Probably going to push mid late, I would assume. Try and wrap in on them. Nope, joins the firepower, so it'll be all five in. And Zipix Kirby now spotting door open. He's going to have a lot of pressure applied. He's got to watch behind Red Crate. Has to fade off 5 7 headshot potential. That nade in the tag. 2 HP already for Kirby. He's hardly seen anyone. And he's going to get the shot either way. Hits Twist on the way through. Lovely bullet from the Deagle. He's got low HP in front. They're doing well here, Astralis. Device and Zipix finding kills. Crims, he's on 8 and Olaf's on 4. They may pull this back. Never mind saving money for the early buy in AWP. There's no bomb plant. 46 seconds. Astralis have held off in Zipix position. Easy shot for Olaf. In behind Quan, it's Crims AK. He's got to hit every shot perfectly because one bullet is gone. Kirby's low, it doesn't even matter. Zipix is there. They go 1 1 right off the start. And Danes and their pistol. They seem to put it off every single time. Astralis is some of the most talented Deagle players, especially and they managed to hold off the attack towards A. Like we said, Fnatic's execution potential, not as great as some other teams. A. You can see they do the basic approach, smokes towards the highway and towards the quad area as well. We didn't see any Molotovs really used or flashbangs. They're just trying to stick together and refrag there. But as soon as that first throw comes in from KRB, you can see them panicking a little bit and they pounce at that point. All of the Stras players coming in with the five sevens of Deagles, doing a lot of damage at that point in the four on two. Fnatic have no chance to get up of work with. But of course, they will be forced buying in return here. It will be an upgraded Arsenal of pistols here, Deagles and Tech Nines, no grenades though. So it works really well for the CT side, but you can't really enter the bomb sites at all with no grenades whatsoever. Yes, you can get a couple of Deagle picks, but it's very unlikely you can win the round. Glaive opens things up, he takes on Olaf Meister, Disco Doppelin boosts it up at this point as well. This is a great position to try and find that first pick, but when the CTs have a five and four like this, they don't really need to go for the control at all. They can leave middle and allow them to just get this area and not actually give them any sort of area to pick whatsoever. And Dennis with Bomb. He's going to move back to the board A once more. Smoke will slowly dissolve. No smokes left. Oh, take that back. There's one. Glaive has it. Zipix tosses out a Molotov instead, but they don't have much to hold off that A site, so 
Timing is going to be everything, but that said, there's nothing on the Fnatic side to isolate yeah, these rifles. Got, he's in such a great position. He's got the rifles as well. Four, three AKs and M4. They can just hold back, hit the shots, wait for the teammates, establish the crossfires. Easy shot there for Device. Get to the info there as well, and the final three players. Here, B, line up to the back of the fourth. It's still awkward, but the second <laughs> shot's perfect. He'll take Twist. Now go 2 1. Fnatic, no bomb plant. Yeah. And the buy on the Deagles means they've got to wait one more. This will be a full save. Those four spies are no grenades whatsoever. I think they're almost pointless. Unless you're going to just rush somewhere and hope to overwhelm the CTs. Trying to work a pick with one Deagle at each choke point in the map. I just don't really see how you're going to win the round. If you find that first pick, what are you doing over that point? You can't really capitalize. You haven't got a massive amount of players that have swarmed the bomb site. And you've got no smokes to actually lock off the choke points once you get that pick. I think it's almost a waste of money at that point. But. We're going to round number four. It's going to be two on for Astralis. So this is going to be the full eco from Fnatic at this stage. Nothing invested in this round whatsoever. You can see five blocks there. No armor, no nade. A chance for Dupree. He still has the SMGs. So they'll be more than happy to push him into these close range positions. He gets more money by Kill and then is not looking at him whatsoever. He finds two, finally taken down at that point. But it should be quite a simple procedure for Kill to finish this one off. The first, the last twist. Already knows he's in behind the box. Well held. They do lose two in this, but. That's fine. It's not a big deal. More importantly, they deny yet another bomb plants, and that means Fnatic, yes, they'll buy into this one, but they're not going to have enough for the AWP. Sometimes when you're SMG player, he gets two kills, he farms from cash, and he dies, it means you don't have that temptation to take the SMG over. He'll be buying up, and if they've got device in the AWP, who for me is probably the MVP of the entire tournament so far. He has been fantastic with this orb, and this map is one of his specialties as well. He can be very dynamic, very scary, and the form he's in right now, you're going to see some aggressive, confident play from him. So let's see what happens as we go into the first real gun run here. Fnatic have got five AK. You can see a distinct lack of Molotov, so he plays towards white box there. Unfortunately, no CD's waiting for it. And you can see now Glaive out with the mid presence. I'm interested to see whether they can do that. It looks like they can be to. As Glaive and his teammate work towards the Kiabi. Dupree and Zipix, though, they're also pushing out on Squeaky. Flash off, tells Crims they're there, and they don't quite spot him on the corner, so I anticipate, yeah, they're going to do exactly that. Back away. It's obvious they're there, that's telegraphed, so they have to fade off. They can't afford to go down and be that aggressive on the CT side. So they get a little bit of information as to Crimson's setup. And the presence on mid as well as utility suggests it's a default. How they react beyond that is entirely up to them, and it seems like passive B is where they've gone, because Device steps well back toward Tree. He's going to hold with just an AWP, but this time there is utility on the Fnatic side. That means they could easily take the site with one single smoke at this point. Can you see the patience from the guy on the screen right now, Kiabi? He's just waiting for a sound cue, something to give him, some indication that he can push this. He doesn't have to. He's doing to see if they boost up, obviously, a very common spot, and a heavy choke point for the terrorists to try and find their first pick, but nice utility uses of denying and slowing down the terrorists at this point. Device with the remaining smoke, he's currently towards the B bomb site. Alone for now, which is fine. He can get one kill. That's normally his specialty. One kill, stay alive, cool rotation. See the smoke under there, times it, but gets traded, Crims. He couldn't hit the clean shot, so therefore it punishes him back. That's going to give Olaf access inside middle, and trades always favor the offense, especially on a map as divided as cash. So they'll split onto the B site. Thankfully, Glaives come back, and Device goes inside of the site with a flash. Can't find him. He's going to wrap generator early. Mid shot from Glaives. This puts Device in a lot of pressure. Has to switch off the op, and the pistol can't do it. And they'll flash off to hold Zipix at bay while Dupree tries to go to heaven, but a quick bomb plant down. Fast kill before the post oh. plant setup means they've got a real chance at this. They don't have kits. And I don't think there was one drop by Glaive inside of the site, but they've got it to a two-on-two -two with a reasonable amount of time still to work with. And Twist, he's limited onto the bomb site. He's not been able to cross. Better shot from Crims, though. And Zipix has to get aggressive if he fancies his chances. They know he's there. There's no sense hiding it, so he goes for the pre-fire instead, but Twist hits the headshot. There it is. People exchange the star that We saw that boost vision come into fruition in the end. It's an equal exchange, Fnatic get the mid control and they go for that B split. It's overwhelming, the timing's actually working very nicely for the T's. You can see the good flashbang takes Device's vision away from the checkers room for a split second. As soon as he do, they do that, they actually push through, he doesn't spot it, they get overwhelmed so close to the bomb site. His teammate can't back him up as well. Device needs a little bit more time to be effective there with the AWP. It's going to be 3-2, Fnatic claw one back, but still money available for the Danes at this point. Four and fours, and Device still on the AWP. We'll see he decides to go towards B once more. He does. He's slightly more aggressive this time, spotting in towards the B storage area, but it looks like another clean default from Fnatic. No early indication as to where they'll be going, but we have got a twist. AWP as well, and to be fair, he's been one of the best players for Fnatic so far. He's been very influential with this weapon and on this map as well. Oh, Smoke position from Twist. Device on the off this time is going to stay over toward B, but get a little more aggressive toward Checker. We'll start to see how Astralis wants to be dynamic with that off, because we know there's tons of options. Good oh, shot. Oh, oh, oh. It's Olaf on this map. And with Olaf down covering B, and if they had it taken middle, it would have been a chance for a split again. With him going down early, they have to reconsider. Mid-presence still seems to be 
the objective. There's lots of options if they can get toward highway, but it doesn't give them a second approach. So they've got to find a reverse kill. They've got to find an equalizer right now. Yeah, this is fine from Vestralis. They're allowing that mid control to come in. It's not a bomb site. It's a very promising area of the map. The team's going to go five on four. That's not good, though. Now he gets taken down. It's up to Zipex now to defend. Dennis is going to continue to get aggressive. Twist with bomb. We'll sit to watch Z double smoke. He's got time. Dennis. Newly lines up another headshot. He's going to cop a nade at his feet. Takes him down to 60. His teammate slightly tagged behind his disco. But this is where they back off because they've forced a rotation from device to A. They've put that pressure on and they can push through vents. It's Glaive alone inside of B. Good mid-round calls again from Fnatic. Glaive last time in this position was found. Couldn't find the angles. This time he does. Good shot at this point. He's got time as well. Device is there. Smoke off, but Device has vision. Now he'll take Dennis. It's just Twist remaining. He still has the ball, but there's 15 seconds. Very unlikely he's going to do anything with this, and with an AWP, bailout. This is going to be the round for Astralis. He may not even get away. Dupree's pushing in through mid-garage. He's going to spray them down. He's already tagged up. Misses the shot. Off oh, gone. Talk about calculated risk there. That was absolutely perfect from Glaive. You can see him saving his utility when they actually fully commit. He doesn't use the smoke at the start of the round. He drops it on front of the side there. That means anyone coming on his right, he's covered from there to go through the gray screen, like that player did just then. Incendio on the left, this meaning they can't actually come towards the bomb side without him finding a couple of frags there. He's towards B by himself. He's anchoring that position, finds two frags, allows his teammate to rotate in and deny everything for Fnatic at that point. That's actually quite a harsh reset for the Swedes as well. So they do have a partial buy going into this one, but they don't have a lot of money. Oh, they actually Four sport fully into this map. It's only been partial by now. It's Deagles, head armor, nades. They're gonna actually go all in at this point and see what they can do with it. They're gonna actually potentially end up towards that A bomb. So you can see them setting up towards squeaky door right now, but Glaive is aggressive towards B. Using that smoke just to gain some intel here and work out there's no one towards Sunroom. Throwing smoke. No towards Sunroom, but on the back side of that smoke, all off stairs. So if he goes too passive, he can still slip that direction. It's pretty straightforward. Krim is playing door. Olaf playing over towards Sunroom and B-Tunnels. That's a very standard setup, like we'd used to do it all of the time. All about information and early picks, and then a response with the guy in the wings. Basically, they're calling inside of the site. We're coming out specifically at the squeaky door on A. And the time is right, and the distractions are down from those at A main. Right now, that seems to be the case, but Crimson's backed off door. They're going to go anyway. This goes in behind Fork, let flash off. Kirby had it lined up, not fully blind. He sprays through. Ooh, good damage as well. As he turns back to catch, I believe it was dead. Twist actually going through to the site, but they've found reverse kills here. They've found a response fanatic, and this provides a little bit of space to get a bomb down, which will boost the economy. And not only that, comes on armor's picked up an M4. Good find from Dupree. As he slips back inside of the site. Device is low, but he's playing all the way from highway. Long shot. So one HP. Now he's gonna get taken down by Crims. And there's two at close. Oh, traded back. Crims on the aim. M4 nearly steals the round back, but Dupree, hero in the end, will give Astralis number five. Crims doing a very good job there. A bit of a desperate boost towards the end. Matt, a nice picture for you there. It's, it's from a guy named Blue, I'm not surprised. Okay, how about that? I, d I don't really know what to say about that one. Cash me outside. What can you say? We saw. I think we saw a similar sign yesterday in the crowd too. Regardless, it's still a very promising round from Fnatic overall. The bomb goes down, the boost comes in. You can see why Crims has to jump and fully commit. The Molotov lands at their feet while they're boosting. He finds two kills, comes down to the one-on-one -on -one in the end, but Dupree, fantastic job there. Fnatic do dent the economy further of Astralis, but you can see Dupree, this was the moment. That's a really, really nice shot from him to finish it off. Clutch moment, of course, and it will be 5-2, but unfortunately, Fnatic, the lost bonus isn't really there. Even with the bomb going down, they're going to have to take an eco here at this point, and it feels like it's a pause coming in. Tactical for Fnatic, an interesting time to take one. They're going to take another partial buy here. Matt. So they feel like they've damaged the Astralis economy. They want to keep applying pressure to it, not that they recover or stabilize. But the problem is, device sellers are not. They've got the M4s out here as well. And I'll have a look at the Fnatic buy. They only a second stage loss bonus. They've left their money about the $1,800 mark. We'll get a little bit less. But uh, they've got Tech 9's armor. Three smokes as flashbangs. Looks like they're going to be favoring towards B this time. But uh, it's normally my devices. And fires off a shot, but doesn't land anything just yet. Switch. Position again though with the vice inside of the site rather than him getting aggressive it's Glaive that's gonna hold from check the vice can bait him in Damage. That's about going back shots through mid though Dupree lines up inside of smoke finds twist it's all on the call from his teammate Olaf's outside events with three inside of E tunnel so Glaive will be the next to be under threat under siege and he's gonna be behind the box but no utility they're eating the economy well. He can get away with playing that position. Good shot. Device on the way through. This will cue them in. Watch Glaive to walk out. Olaf actually gets past him, so Glaive's got to go. He'll get the call. He'll wrap around, and there's Olaf in the middle. It's Glaive that does put him down in the end. Six rounds now for Astralis, but buy incoming for Fnatic. Not much of a buy, I have to say. It's going to be Olaf Meister on $3,600. His teammate's not much above four. So, uh, an interesting one. I'm not really sure what they're attempting to do Double with that force. force. 
Um, that, that partial buy there didn't really bring much to the table. A lot of interesting economic decisions for Fnatic overall, but they do get four AKs, one UMP. Olaf has to get that UMP. They need some utility brought to the table here, so it will be five smokes available, but once again, lacking flashbangs, only having one Molotov, which is a very important piece of utility on a map like this. Lots of position to flush out. You've got MBK, quad, sandbags, for example. And we're going to boost up towards middle, but I think better out here. Make sure more sense. Flash in toward a main. They'll get a peek. They won't find much. They go for the boost instead, Fnatic Twist. He's still up on top of the canopy with a crossfire set from Disco and Dennis to see if anyone's pushed up close. Throwing a grenade. Smoke. I need the AKs to get an opening. If it's struggling to find them, that'll help Disco Doppelin will find Glaive. And that'll open up mid again. Dupree's already rotated move position to play a passive hold from Z Connector, but that's smoked off. And as the smoke fades, does Dupree fancy his chances? He's getting ever closer to the peak. Nades go through, but he can't find the headshot line up toward the vents. That second smoke. He needs a gap he could play with. Device is timing! He's caught close to get the Deagle out, can't find the next one on Twist. Nearly a sitting duck inside feet, but they're overwhelming him and Olaf's upgraded. He's caught either way. Doesn't need the M UMP, goes for the off, gets caught by Dupree. That pulls it back to three versus three, but Sight is in the possession of Fnatic and Crims. He's got bomb down default. Kirby's still in mid as well, expecting someone to be holding for flanks. It's Twist that's already through and inside the checker room, so he's actually buying time just based on the mind games with Kirby. And money's middle of the road right now. If they lose one, they could force into the next, the Astralis side. So they still should be going for this. They've got kits on all three. They've got lots of time. And Twist, Hello. after waiting so long, gets caught by the late rushing in Kirby. A good trade from Zipix as well. And it's going to leave just Disco Doplin. And he's removed. They're already on the defuse smoke out. Oh, but he's nice. actually pushed through the smoke. Haunts them. He denies the defuse. He actually evades Kirby, who thinks he's helping his teammate. All he does is help Disco when Fnatic's going to get a third round. You're absolutely uh, right. It seemed like the intelligent thing to do there as a CT. I'll deny him any sort of vision, but you can see Disco Doplin, as soon as the smoke blooms, he jumps through there and actually benefits him because the CT can't actually stop him. At that point, I think you just actually hold the checker room and just hold the choke point. Stop him actually having any vision and stop him running in. Don't provide him a veil to get through and actually deny the diffuser. Bit of a blunder there. You can see the intention of Kiabi, but I think this holding angle, or even just facing at that point, is to you have a information as what's what's going on and take that chance of killing him. Still though, they do kill four players at that point, so you can see the money still interesting on both sides. Three UMPs for Fnatic going into round number 10 here. It's 6-3. Either of these teams lose this round, they're going to be on an eco, so this is massive going forward. But uh, Fnatic do claw one back just about. And he goes deep. Doesn't do any damage on a twist. Previous tag, he's going to start to gather inside of a main and they'll look for an entry with the UMPs. Fnatic's starting to get really aggressive with their buys. You mentioned it, those two partial buys with armor hindered them in the last round. And yeah. now with the lost round bonus accumulating the bomb plant, they're going to continue to buy, but they're not really chiseling it. I mean, Astralis, they do get low enough that time with Disco. I mean, it, 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 it's still so close for them. They've got to build this back. They're facing a reset. And three UMPs instead. Force them out of the side. Two smokes down. Zipix has to back away. They're gonna play the efficient retake game, but Kirby oh. again when he rotates up from highway is finding picks every single time. Olaf gets Zipix that holds off truck, but the rotations now finally come out of the B side. And there will be a decision here. Astralis, I think, is gonna play a smart tactical game against Fnatic the whole time. This could be the time where you see a very early save call. Again, they've got kids, two of them. But they also don't have money into the next round. And Twist getting Kirby on the way through. If they don't find the next big fail, they've gonna, they're going to have to. But they're committing. Blaze inside of the site already. It's going to pay off. He and Device. They set across. They end up picking kills that they need. Oh, okay, Dennis inside of the site. He's still there. Wrap around. No response from Disco on the first frag. But the oh. second one's there. Two straight clutches for the rookie. Lovely stuff from Disco Doplin once again. Two frags have finished the round off. It was a nice retake from Astralis there. Actually working very nicely as a team, pushing through those smokes. Fnatic are covering the bombsite quite nicely for him. I think they've worked out that's the weak part of the map. Device seems to be towards B. He's not really changing his position up too much at this point, so why not? Smoke off the bombsite, completely remove and segregate any CDs around remaining there. The funny opening picks or equal trades at that stage, and that's a big round of pickup. That's what we mentioned. The Astralis lost that one onto an eco here, and it certainly is. Two PD50s, three USPs, not forced buying or partially buying into this one. So Fnatic, a chance to stabilize at this point. They've had a rough ride in terms of the economy. Which one in the fifth round, close the gap, and get some decent money in the bank going forward as well. So the objective of this one is, don't let anyone go down. Treat this like a gun round itself. Drop the smokes you have, the little utility you have to work with here. And let's try and keep all five players alive, bomb planted. Anyone who needs to go down as well, gets traded out instantly. Device and Kiev, you're gonna try and push up late inside the middle, but the break for Fnatic. To uh, pull this back to within one, Dennis. Quick kill on device. Does he spot Kirby in the corner? I think he does. Yeah. Straight out. Perfect headshot. 
Take no chances from the Fnatic side. Another one likes to do kill on the Zipix toward the bottom of highway. Nade's gonna do good damage on a glaive. It's pretty actually, rather. He gets found by the bullet instead. It leaves Glaive alive. I thought he was the last in that situation. Instead, he's at B. Doesn't even matter. Fnatic's already found him as well. One point difference. And Astralis with economy broken. It's their turn to try and claw back in because CT side, it's much harder to do so. And I don't think, no, they won't. The Vice doesn't have it. They don't have an AWP this time on the CT side. They're $50 light of buying glass cannon for Glaive, and he was never going to do it anyway. It's Disco time, Matt. You like a dance, don't you? Uh, only with you, Henry. Okay. Well, I'll see you later then. But still, it yeah, will be Fnatic now with uh, firmly the keyboard five players alive. That was what exactly what they had to do, and you can see they were very efficient there. Didn't give much away, made sure they actually got information to start, waited for the first mistake to be made by the CT side, then capitalized and pushed forward as a unit. Fast push from B this time from Astralis. Zipix and Kirby already get to Sunroom. They're not going to see anyone, and this is going to cause an early rotation from Device. This is smart because they're going three door with Salesman in the middle. Device and Crims are going to throw crisscross, try and sell event B fake, but they're already in. They're going so fast on the Fnatic side. Never mind the fake, never mind the push back out. And they've got two kills and it's already a save. They're already backing off. Astralis is going to give up the round within the first, I would say, 30 seconds. And the bomb's going to be planted. They've already decided. we got a tie game. Fnatic pulls this back to sixes. Nice little set piece there from Fnatic. I think that was a bit too easy for them almost. You can see them actually taking a lot of the attention off the map towards middle of the smoke. So deployed at the start. CDs can't really see what the hell is going on at that point. And three door, like you said as well, dropping the same smokes towards A, like we've been seeing in the previous rounds, finding the kills, keeping all five players alive as well. Really rough round from Astralis overall. You can see it was a force buy. They were lacking almost everything there. A couple of players on Famuses, and it was definitely a can be classed as a force buy in that sense because we're trying to save towards CT spawn the most common area on the map to save their weapons and it looks like they're going to be challenged at this point as well why not Dennis and Olof are hunting towards this garage area not going to find a single kill out of yet so actually looking pretty promising there for as far as overall it's actually worked out as good as it possibly could have done out the door twist goes nails that first shot not a lot Blake could do about it and his teammate as well Dupree actually no presence in terms of the smokes all day whatsoever this came out dry and Hoping that the focus will be taken towards middle where actually worked out very nicely for them indeed. They tied things up. It's going to be 6 6 at this point. And we do, of course, have those saved weapons from Astralis going into round number 13 here. But so far, no one really running away with it. Astralis had the great start for losing the pistol. But uh, Fnatic have been relatively convincing. Now we're starting to warm up. Disco Doppler, and you have to save the MVP for Fnatic so far. So 6 6, and they have to make a call again. They're not going to have an AWP, but they do manage to save. So again, they're playing the long game, Astralis, with discipline. Watching Fnatic b beat Astralis in a bar in Gothenburg, that's the home of Freiburg, but Sweden is the home of Counter-Strike. They prove it time and time again, I have to say. I imagine there's many bars in Stockholm right now with this game on. Yeah, this is the big one. Fnatic, it, I, guess, I guess you could definitely say they're the underdogs at the moment, which is quite a weird thing to say with Fnatic as an organization, but uh, as far as a fantastic form right now, it's an interesting map overall, I'm surprised it got towards the there, a nice shot, rattled off, doesn't quite connect, but it was very close indeed, you see Dennis, he gets to do all the backwards for the team there, mainly also this map, but well, Fnatic as a team is quite interesting, not really having that defined role, they're quite loose in that aspect, but uh, we go towards B, it seems, they're going to be holding out B storage area, bombed down for now, so no heavy commitment. Interestingly, at the very start of this, it looked like Astralis wanted to set the tempo in a precedence that mid was going to be guarded. They almost seem a little bit timid of it now. Crisscross smokes go out, there's obvious presence on B, and rather than rotate and try and hold mid, both Device and Zipix gave up highway and rotated from truck, which means they didn't want to take the fight. But this push from Kirby, massive, look the wrong way, finds it again, Disco goes down, he can fade away. Very smart play from Kirby to not overcommit here, they've got the man advantage, no need to stay that far behind the enemy lines, get to the site, this is a big pick for Astralis. Yeah, that's really nice stuff, very... Kind of a risk for reward judgment there from KRB, like he said, did a good judgment to actually fall back at that point. He's going to be boosted up onto the site. All of my though, looks like he's going to be pre firing this. Looks like he even knows he's there. Fantastic stuff from Olaf, and it's going to be a 4 on 4 just like that. Highway is the direct counter to that boost spot, and Olaf gets there again because there's no mid presence. Glaive spots a boost going on. A try and to run boost. He's going to foil those plans. He's got the bomb down there. Does he push to Sunroom? Does he fancy getting there in time? They know it's Olaf inside of mid. He's found it's only Dennis, but look at Dennis's position. He goes to underneath them in the site. That's going to give it away. Zipix goes down. Dupree's still there. They don't overcommit. And a good round from Astralis. And props to Kierby for staying very disciplined. Bit of a blunder from Fnatic, I have to say. So Glaive goes at that push towards B. Let's have a look at this right now. Why is Twist the first one to commit the pistol? Why is Crimson not instantly there to take him down? That should be either face at the same time or fall back. Not the all pull your pistol out and hope for the best. That was 
A little bit rough for Fnatic there, but Astralis still came down to Kelby's first pick, trying to funnel him towards that B site. While he's doing that, Glaive's pushing in, so some aggression coming in, that's what we like about Cash overall. He has the options for the CT to go hunt for frags there, and actually take some jewels. And as long as you're confident with your own aim, which players like Glaive and Kelby certainly are, you can find those initial picks, but... Or back out for device. I want to see him get a bit more aggro here. We have seen him be quite contained, and he's actually going to be towards A. Okay, so he is changing position up perfect. This is what I wanted to see. Towards Squeaky Door, hunting for a kill. I'm not going to find anything just yet, but he could come in and actually pick towards T spawn if he fancies it. And it looks like he might just do that. Device all the way out at Squeaky. He wants it. He's going to get in behind them both with an op. He's not going to spot Dennis breath. right away. Now he will. And just like Kirby, on cue goes immediately back to the site. Opening pick CT side cash are huge. Yeah, he's looking a little bit cage shaped after that side, but this is looking good now. Disco's inside, but look at Dupree's position. He's in the vents this time. It's the first time they put a player inside of the vents, and look at the difference it makes. He finds both Disco and Twist. This is another round where Astralis start this early and stay in contention the whole way through. Just Crims and Olaf. It is the two experienced players on Fnatic, the former major winners. Dennis won seven straight events ending in Katowice last year with this team, but oh. he's never won a major with them. Dupree's gonna find Olaf. That's a crazy stat when you think about how dominant even the Dennis era of Fnatic was. Absolutely. I remember we casted their first tournament in, was it by Masters the first time Dennis joined up? And uh, yeah, it was a pretty impressive run after that one. But uh, regardless, what we wanted to see from Astralis overall at that point was Device. He's been towards B, a little bit cage for my liking. Just so I'm about to explain the round. Looks like Krims fancies his chances here. He has got the bomb still. He's in the vents, but he's only got 15 HP and 20 seconds to work with. This round should be out of his reach. <gasps> Huge mistake at this point from Astralis. Oh, and that's getting him going down. The point I wanted to make is Device leading towards B. Fnatic are aware of that. They've been avoiding that site completely. They said, you know what? We're one of the world's best players in that area of the map. Let's just go A, shall we? And it's a good adjustment. We've got Dupree in the vents, controlling towards middle. Device making kills happen towards A side of the map as well, albeit pushing Squeaky Door. But uh, still, a good adjustment. Fnatic didn't see it coming. And Astralis win the half. It's 8 6 here. And we'll have a look at the buy coming in for Fnatic overall. To finish it off, it's going to be Tech 9's armor and a little bit of utility. I assume they'll go back towards A and play that set piece once more. Fnatic probably the most successful roster on Tech 9's throughout history. Important stat I want to point out. Olaf Meister's on four kills only. He's had a few impact kills, but when you compare that him versus Device battle that a lot of people were tantalizingly looking at coming into this, Device is on 12. It's a bit of a difference when you think about impact, isn't it, Dupree? I think they're going to have to have spotted him going back toward that Checkers and box position, so he's gonna have to be a little bit careful, but they are putting pressure on to be this time with the Tech Nines. Olaf, he's already up to the main entry point, and they got the crisscross smokes in the middle, but they don't account for Kier. He pushed up close, good find on the AK, into the site. Dupree posted above the smoke, Blade goes up, he finds another, and Dupree drops back around. Flawless end to the half for Astralis. 9 6. They give up four in the middle, and it looks like momentum shifts. But new Astralis, they adapt. Yeah, that was a good adaption towards the end there. They're actually getting device towards that A side. He can actually hold it by himself as well. He's more than happy to go for that aggressive pick. What is hold towards quad of the A side itself? At that point, they can focus towards middle and the B bomb side and actually eradicate the risk and the chances at the point. That's as, as soon as Fnatic start adjusting as well. They go back towards B. Instant spray down for Dupree and Glaive. So very nice work from them. The score ends 9 6 in favor of the Danes. We'll have a look at the buy coming in for the T side of Astralis here as well. Uh, we can talk about the options for cash as well. Most teams do favor towards the B side, like a lot of maps. You almost guarantee the bomb there, unless the CD gets absolutely sick with the USP and actually finds that first kill. But a uh, comparison for you, ADR, not great for all of us. 35, that's very low indeed. Four kills, 13 deaths. At one point, considered one of the very best players in the world. Oh, the best. The, yeah, I guess that's a very fair statement. Going for this game so far, been quite anyway. quiet, but to certainly recover. As we get into this, it's going to be five sets of armor for the Danes and a default setup as well. So that's an interesting one. This is quite common from the CP so trying to challenge at the start there, but Glaive and Dupree mow them down and nothing else has to be done. You don't have to rush at this point. Hold up, wait for the CTs to go hunting for map control and try and make a move on the map because at this point you've got so much time to work if you don't need to rush at all. And what a game from Dupree. When we start the second half, round 16, he's got 19 kills. We just saw his stats in comparison to the bottom side of the Fnatic roster. Zipix again that seems to be struggling to find the impact, but he's playing that support boost. roles and <laughs> yeah, boost for push. Yep. Not, not a run boost position, so obviously NOA style almost on dust two peak us and we've got two players to fire at you. Yeah, they're just waiting for the next mistake to come in. The CDs can't really sit back. They've got two towards B right now. Twist alone for the A side because he's zipping and squeaky door waiting and is listening out for any sort of tell there's the push and the, the brothers on the floor, unfortunately. Taking down all of my Dennis. 
going to be a five on three. And 50 seconds remaining. They'll start picking up the bomb momentarily. Like I said, no grenades available. But at this stage, it has been quite disciplined for Fnatic. I expected someone to slip up at one point. But towards B, the Charlotte will be ending up, it seems, as well. And Zipex, I think he'll just be the sacrifice towards the A side of the map. Anyone who's there, stop the rotations. If he finds a kill, it's amazing. So if we look at him right now, you can see he's actually on the A site. Fisco's going to be pushing up, though. Watch behind box. Have to check this on the pistol round. Glaive, he's got to be the one to do so. They're going to overlook it. This is a massive chance. Missing shots, though, Disco. He's got to hit those. Yeah. It's a panic at the Disco because he can't get anything. Glaive's going to put him down in the end, and it's a Strawless inside of the site. Twist. He's not going to have any chance in this. No kit. Bomb planted. He had every opportunity. It was on a platter. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. And now we have Twist. No kit, no nades. Retaking it. He did find that kill on Zipex. who was faking towards Ace. He's a little bit late on the rotation here, but... Yeah, Disco Doppler, that was a bit of a nightmare after so many successful clutches here. That potentially they were the biggest round so far. They can't deliver, but Twists trying his best. Gabi takes him down. So a nice round from Astralis overall. Got a little bit interesting towards the end there. Disco Doppler from Checkers. This is the little, little stack they had going on. So this, the reason to see these pushes is to get map control as well. If the terrorists are potentially rushing, you can run into them and get an equal exchange at that point, get early information and stop the rotations quickly. But uh, they run into a stack and see a strategy almost anticipating that to come in. It seems like there's quite a few mind games based on the B-sided pistol, which is usually yep. the dominant style. We saw two different approaches to it. Fnatic. They actually rush B, but Astralis stacked up on A as opposed to playing retake, expecting that it would be the opposite. It's kind of like the whole bluff when you're playing, you know, cards. In this time, they sit back and wait for the aggression, and Fnatic does go for it, and the boost catches them off, rather than the take on A. So both have had different approaches to that. Gonna be a boost for Olaf. Yeah, and Twist opens things up, takes down Kielby as well. And, okay, I was about to say, Device had the biz on. Uh, Arguably the worst gun in the game, but yes. uh, he buys it up. He does manage to pick up Kelvy's AK there, so maybe that's uh, a good exchange, a, a decent deal for him overall. But uh, opening pick and twist, he is a very good scout player indeed. Find something for Nats to work with, work with him. Scout though is going to be on the A site, and right now pressure is being applied onto B. That looks to be the end result for Astralis as Crim starts to rotate back over. Take a quick peek toward mid. He might spot Zipix's head outside of Benz, but Glaive's already inside of the site. Refuse to peek him. Dennis goes for headshot angle with the Deagle. He's got tons of potential, Dennis. We know he's good on pistols. Well, it's not the USP, but it is still a headshot promise. Looks for another one. Does tag them up. Aim punch it back. Or the first still can't find the headshots. He's desperate to get device. Now he will. And it's actually Crims. I take that back from above that rotated around. It looked like it was his shot that found it. Bomb temporarily drops. Zipix and Dupree find themselves in a really bad position. In fact, Dupree, he's got a clutch back versus three and bomb down on the side. He's got 35 seconds to try and find an opening. He's gonna stay silent, spot it up, that's Q to peek from inside of the site, knows the order they're gonna peek from. They had it, the shots, he might have been able to pull it off, but a good win, an important win for Fnatic. Well, the force fight works out, it's very difficult to make that work for you on the CT side, but the scout pick from Twist was very nice indeed. He actually takes that initial player down, which is Kiabi. Five on four, they commit towards the B side as well, like you said. Dennis, the master of pistols, more tweets coming in there, Matt, why don't you read this one out? Tearing friends apart. It's tearing us apart too, Henry. I like it. Fans of both sides. I was wondering where the U.S. fans would go in this major. I want to point out something else. That's a return serve, what just happened. Because remember, it was Fnatic that won the opening pistol. They got ecoed by Astralis. It's the same thing in reverse this time around. Indeed. Turns the favor. Well, it's going to be a force by in return. But this time, this is better. So like I told you about before, Fnatic force ball with no grenades whatsoever. They had deagles, armor, no smokes, no flashes. This round Astralis brought two smokes to the table with Dupree has been taken down nice and early by twist there. So another five on four. Don't really want that to happen these sort of rounds. You want to be defaulting the start and it's operating as a unit with a nice little set piece. Two smokes, try and push through them with the tech nines, but now they've lost that first player. It's going to make it a lot more difficult at this stage. Glaive's going to gather bomb as well and take it from B over toward A instead oh, device. Oh, 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 oh. What a shot by him to start it off. He's going to drop and take over a main instead. Glaive's going to work with Kierby. That's why you do, when you get that man advantage, we discussed it before, you don't really need to challenge aggressively that stage. Device once more, though. Dennis takes him down. And Dennis taking him down could sway things. They find him on A. That opening pick forces rotation. They wanted to try and sell that to get to B, but time's passing, and there's no more aggression toward the A site. This should give Disco the cue to rotate. But they'll leave it to Olaf, alone inside of the site on an AK. It's gonna be three pistols against him, all with armor. He goes down, that's an AK grab. Decent damage done by Nade on the Caribbean Zipix, but he's gotta find the angles. 
And he will find the throws. Still has to hold off. They're not there in time. Oh, watch Disco. Timing is everything. Just gets in. Zipix responds to that. Bombs down inside of the site. AK there as well. He's got the gun. He's got the armor. One versus two. Still a huge order and ask for him to pull this off because they're going to drop in as soon as he plants. And they know exactly where he is. They can play this together. Play it for the trade. Don't even need it. Crims hits the headshot. It was the force five, but it comes down to a five on three. All of Meister there. He gets one kill, but it's enough. It denies a plant eventually, but uh, Zipex into two versus one. Gets the bomb down. That's his main objective. And you, you can see they're just sticking together. That's the way he plays CS in those sort of retakes. You want to stick together, give him two targets, and as soon as he faces, you take him down together. But that was the initial pick. Dupree, you know, by twist, but uh, he actually rotated back towards A storage. That's what I was saying. When you hit that five on four, you want to keep the range nice and long. You don't want to have to. He faced in the terrorists until they fully committed to the bomb site. The vice took him down and made the round very interesting indeed. But it's going to be 10 8. And it should be in the ship. Full ego this stage for Astrala. Since it's pretty difficult to purchase, it will be a Dupree on the desert vehicle as well. But really many options for them. Maybe a smoke towards the A side, flash through. Hope for the best. Try and get a plant. If we get that down, that'd be amazing. No all positive yet for Fnatic. But uh, they have five rifles. Should be a clean round for them. A lot of gone mid vents. He's got lots of map control in that position, cover off two approaches. Oh, can't quite spot the feet, but he'll hear the deagle shots instead. Doesn't want to drop out yet because he still considers that this could be a split. It's actually, again, another sales pitch to try and force rotations and get bombs down. That's Astralis' goal at this point, especially in this round. In the next, they're going to get $2,400 if they don't win this one, which we don't expect they will based on the buy. But that $2,400 is going to leave them light of an op and armor on device if he wants it. Disco's gonna start it off by catching off Glaive in mid, so they have to bust out door, but they need to get some motion going inside of the site. They don't have utility to do it. They've got overwhelmed Dennis and hopefully Crimps misses some shots. That's not gonna happen. Dennis and Crimps hit both shots. Bomb goes down, no plants. And I'll just confirm my math here, because I don't think device has enough for the armor as well. He, okay, they're going to go, yeah, AK, because he didn't. He was just light of it, so didn't want to go glass cannon on the T side. I think that's fine, though. Um, they can run the, the set pieces here. We know Glade has brought in a lot of strategy to this team. The five AKs, all the utilities to work as well. I'll be interested to see what they present on the first gun round here. It's going to be rifle on rifle. No orbs purchased at all here. Fnatic the team round in the previous. Dennis was a very decent spray control. This is a t perfect time now for Fnatic to present something a little bit more aggressive, but maybe a counter boost towards middle. This is something to find that first pick and to shut down any tactic they had in mind. So Molotov to hold off the boost. It allows them to advance and yeah, potentially exactly. get in position for a boost in return. And it's Olaf that's going to do it. Dennis is already starting things off, though. Commotion inside of Amy. Straight back by Device. But Olaf goes immediately, misses a shot. I thought that was his opening. Device still resetting in position, still getting his bearings again after that initial exchange and Olaf changes angle on top of the roof he's still trying Ooh. to find shots drops down instead that was a big big moment there for Olaf Meister he gets taken down the round could be uh, over and just survive but I think he's been wallbanged by Zipex at that point that's through the tin garage door the wide side brilliant yep. shot by him and okay. he silences Olaf again that's going to give Device the chance to try and boost and he's going to smoke off inside his e-connector start to probe out exactly what's going on toward highway double flash no one in behind bags just yet they'll still have to check that on the way through so watch crosshair placement and Zipix the one to do the deed of pre-firing it to try and bait out anyone that's in those positions, but they're setting again for a mid-B split. And Doplin's going to give up at this point and holding mid and actually get over toward B early. He sits outside of the heaven position toward T, but twist up close. He better hope for two. He needs two on the way through. If he can't, he's going to have a huge ball and goes aggressive. He gets the two, and he gets the ball as well. It's traded back by the vice, but now there's a chance for rotation. As Disco tries to desperately spray through smoke, they can still get ball in position. As Crims gets up toward heaven, he'll be able to hold off post plant. That's going to lock device down on top of the platform. So Zipix becomes the key factor in the post plant position, especially if device is going to do that and get caught. Gets a little bit lucky to get position with the smoke out. He can actually finally cross. This gives them a better chance to hold this off and bait in Fnatic. Use the time to their advantage. Fnatic has kits on both, but no more utility to try and get in. And Zipix and Device know they're both toward that side of the map, so Zipix is going to back himself up toward the vents, hold the angle for both. Device watches low. He can just see enough information to get up or hit the headshot as well, and that surely is the round as Disco goes in. Very well done from Astralis. Yeah, lovely teamwork there. You can see them doing exactly what the teammates watching, covering the angles, and well, good information as to where the CTs are. Here's the wallbang. We didn't quite see this. Olaf 
Oh, it's disappointing. Like, I was just saying at that point how well he did the full back and not die. It was a really crucial frag. Twist, recover the situation. At that point, they lose Olof towards middle. He needs to go get some information. Finds two frags yeah. as well. Gets the bomb down. Allows the teammates to rotate in. They just didn't really have much to work with at that point. They're trying to come in from CD Spawn and Heaven as well. But like I said, the positional control from Astralis was very well done indeed. You go into round number 21. A very pivotal one is that. You've got Twist in the AWP. Olof only on the UMP. And Karim from the Famous. So, advantage towards Astralis slightly, I guess, is all has to be a crucial factor here for Fnatic overall. Maybe you're going to be pushing in towards A here because they're getting quite close indeed. He'll be flashing in just yet, but the Orcs will be positioned towards the storage area. He'll be backed up by all of Monster and UMG as well. Point out a small subtlety that they're doing, as we just saw in that setup, with Kirby hugging that corner, playing beside device. So many teams try and bait and switch based on the flash push into A main, then they play behind the box, but we see teams pre-firing, and everyone knows the crosshair placement for the headshot in behind the box. So instead, Kirby sits in the wall. He'll slide out because the flash won't go that deep. It's a slightly different approach, but it's just different enough that it can catch teams off. So smoke towards Z again, double drop over toward mid, and Zipix has come back around to Molotov in toward the vent. There it goes, that's gonna go over the top to the left. That clears out anyone holding that position. Second Molotov's gonna clear out sandbags. All angles already covered off inside mid. They can work toward highway. Very good execution with utility from Astralis thus far. Yeah, he uses a lot of grenades, a bit eradicates all risk. You're molotoving towards white box, the sandbags, and that vents as well. The into CTs of the R they have to face, or does allow you to have it completely in device. So he's looking for this first pick, but he's going to be fast at that point. They're going to smoke towards CT spawn, I believe, as well. That's a really strong smoke to use. You need to concentrate towards the A side itself. Zipex coming out the door at the same time. This is looking very hot. Good crossfire set. The smoke's off. He's low on that push. He's low on HP. That gives Device the angle. And Disco gets pushed from A-Main at the exact same time. He can't snap back fast enough to find Zipix. It's Twist alone. And Astralis looking to get up to the 12th round as Twist gets closer. One versus three. And the AWP and Device holds a tight angle. That is beautiful Counter-Strike right there. Just breaking that round down completely, kind of talk you through it as they're doing it. They get that mid control, they eradicate every single risk towards middle. They obtain mid, two smokes towards CD spawn. That stops any rotations of the CTs that are waiting towards truck, they say an all, but they have to push through the smoke, as you saw Dennis had to do that as well. Zipex is waiting at the door. There's so much aggro and attention going towards highway and the A-bombs at itself. As soon as they've done that, he opens up and he opens fire to any CTs that are trying to defend in that area as well. Fnatic have no idea what's going on at that point. A big round of pickup, Fnatic, full eco. Chance to go to 13 rounds already for Astralis on Fnatic's map choice. It definitely looked the class of the game thus far. Olaf still struggling. Five kills. He's only gotten one since the start of the second half now. Not the Olaf. We know Zipix. He's trying to spray through. Kill feed got written at the same time. I thought he actually hit it, but it was Kirby from A main, and they actually evade the bullets going through. Zipix gets desperate to try and find them on the other side of it. Try and push up for this gun, but Glaive's holding it. You're right, it nearly hits. Watch the flash timing. <laughs> Panic because he has to turn around and dodge his own flash. Olaf nearly capitalizes, and now they'll go for the boost instead. But the gun kills back the other direction. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm starting to calm down here. The boy has an eco. He's still got him over a minute. Just, just hold up. It's fine. Get together. There's going to be a four and two at this point. Twist and Disco Doblin. Only with the USPs here. If they find another kill, I'll be impressed at this stage. So Disco Doblin towards the forklift, and Twist he's towards the B side as well at this stage. All Astralis trying to do is stick together, and they can still use this time if they really want to. Don't need to commit too early. And so that's just isolating the bomb side there. Going to be opening up the door in his favor. And looking for that Disco Dolphin player. There he is. Going to be presumably taking the time momentarily. There it is. And it will be a four versus one now. Twist. Can't really do anything in this. Look for some confidence kills. Exit kills aren't even going to be presented to him. And they're already hunting from behind. They're going to so... have to as well. This is a nightmare. Yeah. Run toward the side, I guess. They're at B. Is there a chance to slip him? We're not going to see a ninja this major. I'm going to call it now. If we do, imagine it's in the I final. I think everyone's learned the lesson now. Yeah, exactly. After the snacks, 1 5. Yeah, on Mirage, that was. I think everyone learned the lesson that day. Yeah. Yeah, snacks couldn't believe his luck, but 13 rounds for Astralis. There'll be a buy on the Fnatic side, but it's going to be lacking in AWP. Remember the previous iteration of Fnatic? One of their strengths on this map was CT side strictly because. They were probably, even though you wouldn't think of them as a double op team, the best double op setup. So not having one of them, this is going to hinder them quite significantly. Well, we've seen some great strategy usage from Astralis so far. That previous gun round where they split towards A, you can see they've got a lot of understanding of the map and how it should be played. It's all about map control, pushing the CDs back, and dropping those great smokes towards CD spawn and just pintering bomb sites and making the CDs look in all different areas. 
Major with the CS boys. Uh, that looks like a lot of fun, Matt. You ever get? Do you ever watch CS at home with your friends? No, I don't, I don't watch CS. I ever. don't have friends, so. There you go. I'll be your friend if you want to teach me how to watch CS. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, we All can right. get that done. Perfect. The round number 23 comes in. There is a buy from Fnatic. Five M4s. They have got one kid as well. We can see they are lacking to the overall and to be device now. Mixing things up. He's got the AWP this time. So, and a string to their bow as they go into this one. They'll be slowing things right down. I think this will be more of a set piece mentality. Is going to be a device boosted up. Use that Molotov to stop the counter boost on the other side, and he'll be trying to pick towards a connector as well. And Molotov goes towards the from Zipex. Olof nice to take as well. He's gonna get all oh, that. It's a real nice setup there. They know Olof's there, he's low HP as well. They're gonna keep applying the pressure. He can get the kill. He can't take him down by Olof. He has to step up. He's gotta show up in this game at some point. His team's done well to hold them in this. Of course, they can't have. I mean, they've got lots of experience, but. They stand on firm ground toward B. What is that from Device? Fast peak on an AWP, Dennis is up close, nails the shot, and again they fall away, that equalizes it, and it spreads the defense out, advantage Astralis. That looked disgusting. How is Device doing it at that sort of range? He has no idea that Dennis has pushed up there, but he brings the kill back in towards his favor. So we know all of his low, he got flushed out of the vents there, you can see the way they set that up. Molotov in the vents, Molotov in check means he has to run through fire at that point, and the idea is that he's waiting in towards Beast Door to take him down. They couldn't hit the shot, he actually gets one in return. They're still a 4 and 4, which at this point I'd say still heavily favors towards Astralis. They have the AWP, they have three smokes remaining as well, and they actually have 35 seconds to work. It will be some sort of beast split coming in here, you can see on your map right now, two players towards B and two going towards events. They get this first pick, they're in, it's over. Twist, trying to dance behind the box. Olaf's just getting there now, he's got high ground. They're going to push through, no, I thought Dupree was going to go to tree. Good shot! By Twist to hit him, Olaf found device beforehand, but this gives Glaive Bomb and Sight. They're down a man, but they've got ground. And Zipix again will be the key in this, because he's the one that gets to back away. Unfortunate for him, once more, he won't have pressure from Vents. He doesn't know that yet. Unfortunately, last time they had all the information for him. He could watch the entrances. This time he won't be able to trade quite so quickly. Still he finds it. Stepping up when it matters. He's had the slowest performance of anyone on the Astralis team thus far in the tournament, but now he's arriving. As always, playing the support position, but he's down. And they know Glaze on the site. He's gonna wrap around. Chance to get slow, but he falls down. He's gonna hit one. Ooh. Wrap around from Crims. But he's got 10 seconds. I think he's just got this. Yeah, he's got that. That's... yeah, that's fine. Oh, a little bit Nah, close. he's got it. He's yeah. already below three and it's not quite there. So just barely a defuse from Fnatic. That's going to give them ten rounds. Two kills from Crims and they split up. That actually worked because position from Glaive, he could have lined them up. Yeah, I thought he had done it. He just stays alive. A few seconds longer there, just gets out of his, Crims' reach. But he pulls a fist out. He knows he's going to be low HP at that point. Astralis drop around there, but they still have money. They got to keep applying the pressure. It comes down to a 1v1, so the money's still not be great for the Swedes here. They pick up the AWP that was dropped by Device B. You can see Disco Doblin, he's only down to the SMG himself. So a real rough round for them if they are to lose this one. Now I'm going to speculate that's almost it for Fnatic. They have no money left over. This has to be a winner. 13 10. If you lose this one, it goes to 14 10. You've got no money left. You have to force buy it if nothing. So this is it now. Fnatic. Unfortunately, he's our first pick, as I've had to say, need this round, and Disco Doppler, the SMG player, he's punished first. Good shot from Glaive. Off on the AWP. Is that what it's going to take? Possibly. That's what we said about Fnatic. Obviously, Twist is known as the main AWP on this team, but anyone can really pick it up. Twist, Olof, Dennis, Disco is known as an AWP at one point, but he's not so much in this team. Zipex, I think he's got another wallbang there. Actually, through the door, he's taken down Dennis, through smoke as well. Those are some of the most frustrating kills to be on the receiving end of, and now it's a 5 on 3. Like we said, a huge round here. Now Olaf Meister does have to step up with his AWP. He needs to make something absolutely massive happen. Fnatic's done well to hang around in this game because it does seem like, oh, look at his position. I think they're going to be the spot. Good lineup, good shot. The first needs to get the spray control. That allows Device out. I was going to say, they've done well to hang around in this game because it seems like Astralis has been forcing the play. Not going to be baited. Olaf has the patience of a saint as he doesn't fire into that first shoulder peak, peak by Dupree. Hits a shot that's much required, and that's going to force them away from the AWP instantly. They're not falling into Olaf's traps. They're not playing his game. Because again, it's going to be Crims that they go toward. And a divide play as well. Look at that UMP in middle. Device is going to catch Olaf. He's rotating. Device Whoa. is set with the pixel play from Olaf. Leaves him in it. Crims goes down. It's going to be the AWP on Olaf that's going to dictate the round. Bomb goes for the default plant. 18 seconds, lots of time. And Zipix gets in behind the quad position. 
But all off. Is yeah. he actually already bailing on this, or is he going to go he's, highway? He's got no care. I think he's just going highway to see if he can get the pick. They know he's towards CT spawn. He's hoping someone makes a mistake at this point. Could very well happen. That smoke, they might think they're covered. He's in the connector right now. Just looking for that first kill. But at this point, he's about five or six seconds before he has to realize he falls back. There might be a kill on the site. There's a kit oh, on the side. Oh, yeah, cool. uh, he, make, he gets the worst of both worlds at that point. Decides to pull back, loses the orb, and we'll have a look at the money going forward. But that should be Fnatic out of this at this point. Only $1,400 coming in. No one above uh, $2,500. That's actually the richest player, Dennis. Everyone else below $2,000. That's the shocking device. But those opening picks, that will damage Fnatic the most. We needed Olaf to step up there with the AWP. He did good work to predict that device was in towards connector. I thought that could be the crucial kill there. But as soon as Krims went down with nothing, not really much Olaf could do there. Low HP, no grenades, no diffuse kit, and any of everything well, he wanted to save. And that's the reason he started to look that direction, because there was, if you yep. could find the first pick, there was a kit down on the way to the bomb, but then he made the hesitation, and he who hesitates loses. He gets caught on highway, op down, and we know an op on this map in the right position in the right hands can be enough to sway is around this, on its is own. Is this the Astralis pause? This the is, so, so the other part of that, and for those of you who don't know, the whole story on that pause at Columbus, basically Fnatic said before the game, this will be an easy 2-0 in the quarterfinals, it's Astralis, no problem. And it was actually the other way around. Astralis had them, one nothing. they were close to map point, I think it was 14 rounds what it was called, and Kerrigan called a two-minute timeout at the time, and basically said, if they thought it was an easy game, I gave them two minutes to think about that, and then they beat them. <laughs> which is where the whole BM comes from. you got to remember, it was Flusher that predicated it, and it was Kerrigan that called it, so neither of those two people are here, but it does think, build a rivalry between the In terms of the BM, orders. it's pretty light, it's taking a pause of a game. I thought it was like, brilliant. It, it's, it's funny, but like, I think the, the, the interview earlier of Olaf, he's in a little bit. Salty about the whole thing, it's like, it's not that much of a big deal. It's just kind of, it's, it's yeah. a little bit silly, but I don't know. I, I kind of like it. Like I said, anyway, Fnatic will be on the whole force by here. It'll be CZ's, UMPs, and Deagles. It's a really rough round for them, and as far as one away from map point here as well. That'll just be starting things right down. Let's try and ascertain what kind of buy the CDs have right now. Like I said, this is pistols and an SMG. Not really much I can do to even work a pick. Not well, particular stack coming in either. The question is, do Dupree spot all off speed? Yeah, I think he backed up to try and get a better angle, but Olaf's gone away from that position. The only weapon, aside from a hand cannon, is the UMP on Dennis, and that's over toward A. Zipix is at the door, and they are slowly going back in that direction from the Astralis side. One round away from map point, facing overtime point, which takes a lot of pressure off them. But they're in control. I don't think they're feeling pressure right now. The Zipix will open up the door, that'll allow him to bounce the ball in behind the force and clear the match from where Dennis was. That forces him in transition and he gets caught from the open, perfect team play. <laughs> and they're gonna use utility again to try and get Crims out of position. Flash over the top of red, that'll be the entrance as soon as the flash hits quad. Well timed from Zipix, wraps in. Crims fully blinded, Astralis is looking so coordinated right now. All the kills in their favor, just Olaf to find, it's gonna be 15-10 for the Denmark side over top of the Swedish. Yeah, Olaf Meister remains, and not really much he can do here, I'm afraid. Five on one, he's got no kit, no nades, no weapon, and he's towards middle and the bomb's down on A. This is going to be map points and indeed maybe the end of Fnatic on cash, because they go to the next round of $1,900 uh, to add to their zero total right now. So it's going to be a very similar buy, SMGs or pistols all round, and Astralis is going to be very aware of that, and they can just hold up and do more of the same. Let's treat it like a gun round, shut it down quite easily. So device searching to try and find Olaf, who's hoping desperately that's what they're doing, because if he can get one kill and get a gun, that benefits him massively. At this point, forget about giving away frag money. He wants the headshot, but that's found by Dupree instead. And it will be map point for Astralis. There's a lot of delighted people about that. <laughs> when we move on to New Connect's map. That could go. I, it's Astralis's pick, but that, I still think it could go either way. Yeah, I would agree. It is Nuke. But the, yeah, Nuke is, is still uh, an unknown factor overall, I would say, in CSGO. But in terms of team play and executions, you have to say Astralis have looked like the better team overall. Uh, Fnatic have given us sensational rounds and some big clutches that Disco Doppling saved them out of a couple of tricky situations. But here we go then, round number 26. It is 15-10. One more round will do it for the Danes. They're going to move up towards D, but some good damage from Olaf. Sound to a right, but he finds a kill and headshot another. Flash himself back into the play as well. Quick reload on the CZ. He didn't actually complete the reload, so he still only had two bullets left. The animation didn't finish. Stupree grabs the AK. They'll back away. Good trade. As you say, though, there was decent damage done on device. That could have been hugely problematic for Astralis. Yeah, they try to finish things off. They had a simple play towards B. But Dennis has got himself in a very interesting position indeed. He's pushed out all the way towards A. He's the multi frag here. He's almost guaranteed one. Can he get the second? And with the UMP, device is low. He has to hold up for Glaive to hit that shot. 
Smart and disciplined Glaive nails it. That'll open things back up again for Astralis if he finds both there and bomb. Fnatic has a real chance to find round number 11 instead, though. He'll slow it down on the Astralis side. 57 seconds, no need to overcommit. Decent utility left on both Dupree and Device. Glaive not so much, but he'll deliver the bomb after they do all the work. Really in the meantime, insane. he's going to look for a hunting kill because he's still got the HP to work with. Try and bait in Device potentially with a jump across, but Crims is outside of squeaking. Now the question is, did Crims close the door behind him? Are they going to predict that if they walk in? He did. So if they walk in from A main, they might not know that he's there if they even go that direction because right now I think they're relying on the call from Dupree. But in turn, Fnatic's playing off that information cr from Crims, which means there's two inside the B site. Disco, though, Dupree slipped in behind him. Has to spot him, he's safe so silent. Disco's gonna go around outside of the vents. Now he's known, but is he found? Because he still has all oh, five, seven, four timing. He's gotta go. Low HP finds one, he turns around, it's another. It's the right perfect play from Disco with a lot of luck. And it's gonna leave just Dupree remaining. Pop flash his direction will buy Disco more space to get away and back into the corner. That baits in twists and Fnatic do find round 11. Somehow they make it work. Disco Goblin finding two big frags, I have to say. You're absolutely right in terms of that. The luck factor there. He looked a little bit overwhelmed, but somehow the low HP flares is right into his crosshair. He's managing to negate. As he pulls out the flashbang as well, he just has to commit. Very good shot on the second play there as well, but it's Disco Doppler once again delivering for Fnatic. They're not out of this just yet. They will be able to force around this now. It's going to be much better than just pistols. You can see they've got a plethora of rifles there. Two AK-47s, make it three, and two M4s as well. So they're straight back into this. It's going to require four rounds in a row. And it's far with that heavy commitment towards B at the start. I think that this kept to original plan is working the defaults, getting a pick. They would have been much better off, but they gave all of us that chance to kind of pick them down by Stennis. Aggressive there towards Squeaky Door, doesn't find the kill. Taps through smoke, hoping to find someone on the other side. But it's a twist instead that's going to get Dupree. I said Fnatic had done well to hang into this game because it never really seemed like they were ever convincing to win it. it just suddenly they were getting more rounds than you would have thought watching the gameplay. And now, if they can start to accumulate them, they could yeah. still force out an overtime, especially here. I'm just going to peek at the money really quickly. Yeah, Astralis is break point right now. So this could put them to 13, and then, as we know, Astralis, we have to mention it, I think they've moved past it as a team, but this is, this is the final boss one. This is the semi-final of a major. It's when they struggle in these closing stages. Kirby's gonna check out Cubby inside of middle, drop down, that gives them a bit of presence to start to work up toward highway, and I think this is gonna be the ace split, because Glaive and Zipix are out toward default spot for smokes. I expect... Oh, I think they went highway and deep. I didn't see Zipix's lineup because I don't think they covered off quad for landing. Crim still has vision before the smokes even land. In fact, they go deeper than that. They both go toward trucks, so Crim can actually still play onto the highway. Lovely shot from Zipix on the way through. That's going to take him down. Open up Device, who finds Dennis. It all plays into their hands on one single pick. And Disco Dolphin, those smokes have left him isolated, removed, and waiting for help to bail him out from B. Oh, wow. Device That's timing. Yeah. Yes, this may dissipate there. He managed to get away. Should be punished at this point, but Twist doesn't want to commit just yet. Device has a chance to reposition here. Gets a good angle. Gets it, but only does him. Down to 12 HP. And look inside of the site. Olaf's got Glaive. It's just Zipix. He knows they're coming from Trump, but he tries to relocate. First headshot success. 13 bullets left in his magazine. Low HP on Twist. And he's pre-firing the angle. That's going to leave him with only 8 bullets. He's got to reload. Does he get it in time? Not quite. Olaf around the corner. Fnatic will find 12, and it's a broken Astralis economy. They try the A split once again. It's that first player at the start of the round that's Dupree towards B-Story. He's trying to show presence there outside of the map. Twist takes him down. They go for the mid-control once again. The Molotovs are deployed towards Connector, Vents, and Highway once more. They go for the A split. They just don't really have the firepower there. Fnatic can feel it coming. The smokes come down. They face Highway, get the frag in their favor. Comes down to a clutch in the end, but still, you mentioned it before, Astralis have been broken. The money is now disintegrated. Fnatic now have a chance to really get back into this. From round 22 to 28, Olaf has gone from five kills to 12. Seven kills in the last six rounds. It's nothing extraordinary, but late in the game, Olaf coming alive. It's the scariest proposition that could face Astralis right now. They have got the overtime point, so pressure's off in that sense, but even for Nuke, him to get woken up and get awake, to roll into this. We talked about it with Cajun B yesterday from North, how he had to recover from that, so it could be the same thing here for Olaf. Well, we've got some Desert Eagles here. These Danes known as some of the best Deagle players in the game right now. Still a deadly factor here. It's gone for the partial buy as well. They've actually got Desert Eagles at our mark. They've saved two grand, but it's going to be the first two frags for Fnatic here. They don't have to commit any further, can fall back to the side of this point. The lineup's there for Grimms to find another toward Glaive. Taps for that shot. Can't quite get it. He'll make it into the vents, but he's greeted by Olaf on the other side. In behind the box. And Device will go back for Bomb in a desperate attempt because Zipix oh. is inside of the A site now. They can still hold it off for a plant. 
He'll go the safest route possible. That means going squeaky door. And at this point, Fnatic doesn't care about plants. It's map point. They know they're going to buy in the next round. They'll wait. Dennis isn't going to overcommit, so... So boost slightly the economy for Astralis. But they were always in a position to grab an AWP in the next round anyway, so it doesn't change much. Fnatic knows that. Discipline, the better approach. Flashes out, trying to catch them off. Trying to hit a one headshot from Zipix on the Deagle. His teammate already gone, and Crim's finding him. It's going to put Fnatic on 13. Semi-finals in Astralis map. Never something that's really gone too well for them. Never made it further than this stage of the tournament. And when you've got players like the Vice, it's quite a heartbreaking kind of sentiment to have. But we'll see what happens here. It started off so well, but 15-13 now. Overtime looking like a possibility, but Astralis are keeping calm. There's still two rounds to go before that happens. Should be able to get the AWP out if they so wish. So far, going to have four AKs, now five. But they have got all utility to work with. We've seen some great executions for them so far. This one round will do it for Dennis now. And have a new player to step into the orb role. He'll be picking that weapon up. Whether he has a decent spawn. Yes, he doesn't. He's just taking it over. And he'll be playing towards the A side of the map. He looks for the pre fire That was lined up. I think this goes on the other side of the wall. Back towards CT, so it wouldn't have done much. It would have gone through two walls, so it wouldn't have done much damage. Clearing inside a main, they've not gone for the boost yet. That means Disco's flirting with the fact that the smoke's down in the main garage, and he's going to get toward the vents in mid. Good position. We saw him here before with the 5 7. And Olaf's aggressive at B on top of Box. Twist will cover him off, try and get support, bait them in toward him, but that means Disco can pop out either way. It's a good setup again from Fnatic. This is a defining round. If Fnatic somehow pull this back, Astralis again. I don't know if they can recover from that in a series like this. Boost up for Device. Glaive's gonna take Bomb over towards Zipix, who does have a Molotov cocked and ready. Gonna go toward the vents with that. That'll force Disco back, so it will open up middle for them. Lands perfectly. Disco's forced away, but Twist is rotated, so they've doubled up the mid strength with a traditional rotation. As soon as I say that, though, Dennis has an inkling this is going to be with that Molotov pushing vents back. A split toward A, and it's the right call, so Twist rotates off early, it's all on Crims. One is up, Shadow through his favor for the flash! He hits two! Fully blind, and Crims knocks them down! It's massive for Fnatic! Because now Dennis can go to work on the A site. No smoke in front of him, and that quad spots the first one out, takes the shot. But remember, I already said this, Twist is rotated over. He's here with an AK, and Crims has arrived as well, and told the device to pull it back! It's now that he's displayed! One versus four, Fnatic! They've got 14 rounds, and they break Astralis again! My god, Krim stepping up there above and beyond expectation. I thought when the flashbang hits him straight in the face at that point, you think he's going down, maybe he gets one frag. They line up for him completely. He can't believe his luck, he's still alive, and he gets two frags. Amazing stuff. And you can see them holding them off towards that ace out of the map. One round to go, and Fnatic will take us to overtime. Still a lot of work to do here, but in terms of lost bonus, we've got fourth stage here, so $2,900, and I think it's going to be a tactical timer for Astralis. One round separates them with Nuke and just closing this out right now. We're going to overtime and that could be quite a complicated procedure. Money's all reset at that point. Fnatic seem to have come to life here towards the latter stages of this CT half. They've worked out and kind of deconstructed Astralis completely. The last round will consist of two AKs, a Tech 9 and a UMP for Astralis. As we go into this final round, so the M4 comes in. Good spawn with Twist as well, but no AWP. That did go down. They've been playing better without it now that they're getting the crossfires set up. Especially Olaf, he's got most of his kills on the M4. Big round, Fnatic. They force Cash into OT. Bounce flash out, push off anyone that's trying to get up toward mid position. Crims as well. Playing a more aggressive angle, catches the edge of the shadows before the flash hits. He's one step back, I don't think that play happens. The flash goes in toward a main. This will slow Astralis ever so slightly, but they aren't pushing on that. Glaive still waiting as well to throw its default smoke out toward, I, I assume, highway this time. It has to be because they don't have a double smoke set up for truck, and they want to get the site. Forget trying to get picks on the way through. Just get in, and Dupree's going to do that. Down goes Dennis. They've been moved off the wall, but Crims rotates over late. Zipix isn't ready for it, but look at the kill immediately before that on the obituary. Oh. It favors Kierby, but look at Crims going in. Another double, a triple. He's stepping up huge late for Fnatic. MVP status so far on their side. Disco's had his moments, but right now it's all Crims. And they're going to take the bomb back. They're forcing the rotations. This is a gamble. Glaive's going to leave Device alone in A, and he's going to hope for the best trying to wrap around. Now the question is, is this a full bailout? If Device spots two in A, I think it is. But right now Device hasn't spotted that, so Glaive has the option to wrap back through A main. 
and they work together, and I think that's the right call, and that's exactly what Glaive's looking to do. So Device will set, wait, patience is everything, but now he's working back. I think Device has made the call. Device has found the opening pick as well. This is going to hold all up. If Device can hold this down, and Glaive can get there fast oh, enough, it's a massive play, but Glaive is so scared, he's so yep, timid. Go now now go. it's go, now he's spotted him, yep, Glaive's on his heels. He's running 22 seconds, Device is still doing battle, he's low HP. Olaf's gonna realize it the second he gets this kill, but he's not found him, where's Device going? He's on it behind, Olaf does get it, but now he realizes, bomb down on B, and it's a one versus one. Glaive versus the man, the sleeping giant who has woken up, ladies, up to 15 kills. 10 in the last 8 rounds, none more important for Fnatic than this. He's got a kit, he's got a smoke, he's got an M4, and Glaive's got a UMP and he's playing a far angle. He's hoping desperately that he can play this to time and he can line up the shot. Smoke on it, Olaf's gonna hold this, Olaf's gonna hold this, Glaive's off, no. Olaf's got it, 2 seconds, Olaf's got it, it's overtime! What an incredible play from the world's former best that he shows it again, Ninja to fuse for overtime! And Fnatic, their hearts have to be sunk at this point. Again, they had this game in full control, 15-15, and all bets are off. It seems so perfect from Astralis there. Baited him out, Device staying alive as long as possible, but Crims, he did most of the work in that round. Three kills by himself, isolated out, smokes all around him, all the grenades landing at his feet. But Olaf Meister, you said it, he's had a quiet game throughout, but he's won one of the most influential and most important rounds possible. One on one with Glaive, he only has that SMG, and the smoke grenade so vital, the ninja defuse comes in, sprays a few bullets at SMG, doesn't find him. At that point, the round's over. He had to rush him down with the pistol, maybe commit, he was hoping for the fake defuse at that point. And all of a sudden, everything's been reset, Matt. 15, 15, this is a whole other game. This is a way different game than regulation now. Yep. Psychologically, Fnatic's also playing much better Counter Strike. I think they're going to give up on the op. I think they stay rifles the whole time. Which also has benefits in overtime based on the 10k MR3 system. So remember, no pistols in overtime. $10,000 starting. You lose twice, chance to save, but no ops will give them a better force buy in the third. See if that's the approach they want to take the whole way through this. Well, Device, he has got the AWP, Dupree looking for some controls towards checkers at this point, which they've obtained. Boots up the defense. This is very promising thing to do. Thing is, it will make a noise when it go through. So, the CPs, doesn't look like they're aware. Disco Doppin taken down, 5 on 4, just like that. Getting control of the B storage area like that, denying vision from the CTs can be very beneficial and can commit to this site if they so wish now. Twist can bait in Olaf on this perfectly as well, and hence why Olaf's ready with a support need, but they changed the position. And I'm not sure if they heard Glaive. I think Olaf may have heard Glaive running back to that bait. He's not actually gone all the way back. He took a few steps. That bait's in Dupree. That works out perfectly. And I'm not sure it was by design or not, but it does work. And Twist is going to catch Dupree, but they rotate back inside. And Dennis is there. Good shot from the Vice. Well, trade after trade. It does favor Astralis at the moment. Three versus two. Crims has to step up once again. Gets the kill. Drops the bomb. Equalizes the situation. Device will scoop that, and Crims will give up position because he wants to play in tandem with Twist. Twist may say he's learned a lot from Dennis and Olaf on this team. Crims is another he can learn a lot from as well, but their former teammates way back. He's still a solid player. What a shot from Device. Twist goes down. It is now on Crims, who's put them in these situations time and time again. He knows there's one in the site. He's expecting the other in A-Main, and he's right to assume so, but it doesn't mean he can pull him out. Now he can. One-on-one -on -one again. He's got a kit. It's planted wide though, so there's no need for Zippix to try and peek this, hence why Crims has to go aggressive. The shot will reveal his location, but Zippix stays open, it works! Astralis pick up round number one. It feels like every clutch has gone in Fnatic's favor, but finally Astralis pick one up. Big, big round. If anyone's not aware of the overtime system, you play three rounds in either half. First uh, 19 of your screen to the top there, but uh, Zipex comes in clutch there. Crims, we thought he was going to shut them down. Great positional control on the bomb site. Takes the bomb down there as well. Certainly makes it interesting. We were going to round number two, Matt. And you said the orbs. They've been going. Yeah, they've been doing better without the the, the orbs. Now they've got two of them. So maybe that was the missing formula. We'll see what happens. It's true because they did never really have the double orbs set up yeah. in regulation. Okay. Oh, that's how you start with an op. Take down the reverse roll of device. Olaf gets it. He stays aggressive. Look how aggressive he is. Twist is going to rotate around to try and get him out of this. Jumps across. Now remember, the other AWP was in Dennis's hands. That's been dropped as well. So two ops on the deck to start things off as Dupree starts to push up in toward 
B tunnels, but then thinks better of his positioning. Bomb's been dropped inside of mid this whole time, so they are playing a calculated game to try and find the pick and return. Uh, equal situation for now in terms of the utility available. Astralis do have smokes, molotovs, and everything they want, but no map control I obtained as of yet. So, the same smokes and flashes we've seen towards middle are dropped once more. Dupree makes his way towards the vent, but Disco Doblin will be the one to defend. Flashes in, won't be challenging just yet. They're going to allow the uh, Astralis team to have control of middle for now. And KRB, he's looking for a pick towards A. Good shot from Olaf again. Now he's got his op rolling and he's rotated. They're being dynamic. He goes over toward A. Astralis thought that was going to be clear, but Dupree's the money man in this because he can push through. Better play, smart play from Disco. He knows they've got all the information on the sites. He doesn't need to be aggressive, doesn't need to get caught off, so he just holds position and they walk directly into his crosshair. It's Twist to step up next. A two versus four for Astralis to try and pull back. Zipix has got Disco down, but Olaf's on Kevin with off watching cross. Spray in from Zipix tries to bait him out. He's right to assume so, but Crims is getting ever closer as well on the flank as he comes around from the A side. Lovely shot from Blade. It's all about timing because Crimson has to start moving. They get all off down as well, but will they read the flank? Both on top of the site. Surely he can only get one before they're both exposed. And Zipix is looking that direction. He's considering it. He's pulled his way into the corner. So even now, if Crims comes this direction, he has to commit in full force to the site. And Glaive's starting to realize, I don't have any information here. He has to be coming from this direction. The shots reveal it. Looking for the headshot taps toward the generator. He's got it. And the peak from Xipix is extremely aggressive. He nearly gets caught as well. Crims on 48. It's the M4. Has to switch to pistol. He's depleted his ammo. And he'll go aggressive. Xipix is trying to beat this out. Get as much time as possible. And Astralis will get two in a row. Two in a row for Astralis and two in a row for Zipex. Another clutch and four frags in total for that man. Olaf opened it up. Look at that oh. amazing shot of the device as well. I thought that was it. He managed to stay alive with Glaive and Zipex doing some really, really strong stuff there. Amazing team right? Just finding kills left, right, and center there. Zipex left in another 1v1. Twist did actually a really good job to even make that round possible for himself. But like he said, once the bullets were depleted, round was over. Zipex still had 100 HP, but taking two headshots out of range. But there it is. It's going to be 17-15, 2-0. If you get to 18, that's a 3-0 on the T side. That's a very good position to be. You can see the money being depleted. That double orb setup to make things very difficult for Dennis in this final round of the half. I think Dennis is going to wait for the opportunity. I think Dennis goes on this. He's got the UMP. He's hoping to get enough information to be confident about pushing through that smoke. He'll be flashed in. But, uh... Better. I think this is actually better now because he's missed the opportunity to get the vent. Look at where they are. They're both in front of him. Oh, can't decide where to look. And Kierby makes no mistake about costing him the hesitation as Dupree gets inside a checker device with Olaf down. This could be a three sweep for Astralis. How bizarre is that when they couldn't find a single round when needed in regulation? <laughs> Very close to twist there. Wanted to push him with that flashbang. Ultimately wastes it as he gets locked out with the Molotov there. A five on three now. Astralis oh, looking for that 3-0, such a strong position to be in. Means they only need one round in the second half, and they switch over to CT, but a lot of problems lie in their path. It's going to be Disco Doblin and Crims, who have been fantastic so far. The lack of weaponry is going to be a massive problem going forward, though. Kirby will climb his way across the box, not leave himself exposed from the heaven position. I believe. Smokes to tree. Smoke heaven as well. They haven't actually used that one as much, but Disco's gonna go aggressive. Flash himself back in. He's got to give support to Twist, but he's caught. Zipix has him down. A pistol only inside of the B site. Device waiting for rotations. The pistol's done well, to be fair. Twist, he may get another. Dupree's there, and I think this is a three sweep. Crims be. knows he can't play for rotations at this point. He's got to get to the site. It would be perhaps the play of the tournament if he pulls back this <laughs> one versus four. Okay, I, I would agree with that sentiment, but we'll see what happens. Grims, no nades, no kit. Just the Thomas, which is running out of bullets rapidly. We'll see what he can do here. It looks like it's almost uh, impossible at this point. He's gonna have to find his first kill, which he does, but instantly trade in his Kiabi. The 3-0 comes in. I would say it was a little bit of a choke for Strahd towards the end of that first, uh, that second half. It seemed like they were losing every single clutch, just couldn't close it out, but that's recovered it quite nicely. We're a little bit worried for them going into that first half of overtime, but now 3-0 means they need one round, and they'll be moving in towards the new victors of the first map. Yeah, exactly that. Overtime magic number 19, 18-18. If Fnatic do the exact same thing that just happened to them, get all three, we do it all again. So, do we see the device AWP come in? Yeah. I expect right now as well. Remember, you're allowed up to two minutes, I think, in overtime halves. That's Regulation, right. you're allowed five minutes. I think overtime's two. It may still be the five. But they're going to take this, Fnatic. Regardless of whatever time it is, they're going to take this. They're going to talk about it as much as possible right now. Absolutely. Just work out how to find that one round. 
Maybe you don't get the AWP. You just have the five rifles there. Key money nice and strong, especially if that third round of things fall apart a little bit. We've got a vote to start the game there, but uh, no one ready quite yet, it seems. Here's a little bit of statistics for you. Crims, what an amazing game he's had there. Got them in towards overtime, arguably, there. So many clutches from him and Disco Doppelin as well. Dupree's performing well. 98 yards, that's considered good as well. 28 kills, 22 deaths. But Crim, 33 yeah. kills, 23 deaths. Towards the end there, he just went absolutely nuts. And, and, and Olaf woke up in time to get to 17. He's now right on the back of everyone. It's 33 for Krims, 19, 18, 17, 17. But on the other side, it's a much, even kill, much more even kill distribution. Everyone's in mid-20s. So Krims is the standout. And the clutches he had, the spray down at mid, the double kill, triple kill, in fact, over top of Red Crate inside of A. Two rounds in a row. He, massive for Fnatic. Well, yeah, I'll take you full advantage of this pause time. And the buys is time to come in so we can start to... So yeah, I think, yeah, so they, they okay, still want about two go. more minutes, I so think. We so we can talk with this. the buys in the approach of Fnatic. So to remind everyone, they need three rounds in a row now on the T side. So the buy going to this first round is going to be four AKs and an AWP, but I think they are resetting, so that could change up. Okay. Maybe that was a problem, maybe they want to change this approach. I think, so I think, yeah, okay, so... It was Olaf with the AWP, but now... It's twist. Up the twist. So they have changed it up based on a restart on that. They're still going to take the time. I saw a vote go in, but again, if... Got to talk this over, and that's that's a harsh decision because T side it off for Fnatic on an app like Cash. If you can get in with the rifles and keep the AWP inside B halls or A main with a wide enough, safe enough plant with the confidence and time to do so, it's powerful in a post plant. But otherwise, they need an early pick with it. And where do they go? Because again, Astralis was actually quite passive on mid. Well, it was interesting towards the end of that CT half as well. The Vice started playing towards the A site with the AWP. That's when they actually closed things out. They kind of recovered from when Fnatic tied up the situation. So that'll be interesting whether the Vice goes towards B at the start and then potentially moves the next round towards A. We'll see what happens. But we are live, ladies and gentlemen. The second half of overtime here. It's currently 3-0 in favor of Astralis. One round in their CT half here. We'll close things out. Fnatic need the clean sweep to force double overtime here. And they have got the open hands of Twist. He's had a relatively good game so far, 19 kills for him, but Krim's definitely leading the charge. He's got a decent spawn towards B, he might have a spread up challenge here. We'll follow him for now and see if he can find anything. Going to be flashed off as his opposition make their way towards Checkers. There's going to be Device in that B area as well. Device versus Twist, Op versus Op. Massive kill to find early on, it does sway things. Oh, did they fail the booster or were they just starting to go for it? Either way, Dennis hears them. Then there's opted out and they heard the bullets start to fly in. It's going to be a very precarious situation to be in at that point. Dennis still checking it and he's a little bit worried that the boost might still be there. It's not going to be possible for him to find anyone up there as of yet. You can see that the setup comes in. Zipex alone towards A. This can be quite common. He's going to find one frag and stay alive as long as possible. It looks like he's up towards A. They did find a lot of success in this area before they commit. They're waiting to deploy their smokes, and they, they seem to have a good understanding of which areas they need to smoke, what flashbangs need to come in. You know, isolating the CTs very well at that point, but they still don't have to commit at this stage. They're going to have to be slowed down at this point as well as the CT smoke comes in towards A main. So Twist picks up Bomb. They like to work ever closer toward the A site with it, with Crimson behind the door. And it's going to be a boost. I expect a 4-1 off of this. I can't see them leaving 3 for entry with the setup and firepower that Astralis have had inside of that site. Kierby as well, remember, his highway rotations have been huge at shutting down that squeaky door, so if Olaf can get it behind him, which he looks to do, that takes him out of the equation right away and forces Zipix to have to turn his attention. That's gonna happen. No, it's not! Kierby turns around, but Doplin, he gets Glaive inside of the site. Zipix has to play perfectly with 16 HP behind the quad. He's got Dennis down. He's gonna try and force them all the way in. That forces him into wow. the crosshair of Kirby. What a bait play, but what a shot from Twist. Now the shots have to come out. Pre fire's not quite there. Uh -huh. Twist again, missed shot from Device. It's down to Jitsu Free and Fnatic. They need all three rounds. They may, may not find the first one. Because Dupree's got something to say about it. He's not the one with a kit, but there are some down inside of the site. So he's got time to work, but Twist doesn't want to give it to him. A fast peek and Fnatic finds 16. They can't close it out. It's Fnatic once again coming in clutch. They need every single round here. That's 1-0. Dupree, I thought he had it there with the boost, but confident as ever. Twist of the AWP finds the final frag at that point. I thought Zipex had done the work. It looked like he locked him out for long enough. He found a couple of frags. They're staying alive, waiting for the rotations to come in as well, but it's not enough. Astralis take a time out here and that's one step closer Fnatic taking us to double overtime Astralis just can't finish this game off they had plenty of opportunities in regulation time to do so but here we are in overtime and now 3-1 and escapes them but a tactical timeout for Astralis they have 
got the buy coming in as well. It's four and fours at the moment. Device can afford the AWP. Shut down in the previous round, but I don't think he'll be straying away from it just yet. He went towards B. I think, like we said, their most successful setup. That's why they're taking the pause right now. What's going to work out best here? This Fnatic team seems to favor towards its A site and towards middle as well. That's why they get most of their action going on and most of their frags. Let's oh. get the advice towards that A side of the map. Given that first and more comfortable control position. Let's get into it. Still a bit twist on the AWP, of course. He's certainly had some big frags in the last few rounds. Underway we go. Twist again. Straight onto the AWP. And they're going to do the same with the Vice now. I, I would say now he's almost certainly going to all day. He wants to be part of the action. That's where they're, they're mostly showing their hand and finishing up. So I would say moving that squeaky door push, something like that, go for the first pick, try and close it out. Because next round, if they do this, they're going to have do lose this, they're going to have no money at all to work with, so he needs to make something happen. He knows they're not really quite finishing these rounds off cleanly. He still had sword to him now. He's got a spawn. It's reasonable. I can like, understand this. There's a lot there as well. He's not going to go all the way around the corner. Device not quite in the lineup, but look at Dennis. Trying to get around the smokes at A to get information toward Forklift. If they even think about flashing in late, he's got prime position for it. Through the door. Crims takes down Zipix. A taste of his own medicine. He's done a couple of wall bangs this game. His effects finally taken down. He does damage Crims to 16 HP, but they have got the man advanced Fnatic and a lot of time to work as well, and the grenades in the bag. You can see the CT starting to wonder now what's the play at this point. Device, he's still towards the B side of the map, starting to rotate in. Left it completely open at this point. This is a massive gamble. Look on the mini map right now. They've got no one towards B in terms of CT presence. And I think they're going to go reverse boost as well. Oh, they're definitely plays. trying to pull this back. This is a risk. To eradicate the offset in a five versus four, that door never even opened. That was a pre-fire out of spawn as soon as they arrived. Crims gets the better of it. Okay, over the M4, but look at Dupree. This time he's perfect. They're in a main. Disco's got his back turned. He's ready for it, but he's got hit shots. Has it. Lineup's there for Dupree. He's got two. What a play. Glaive's got all off. It's Crims and Twist to keep Fnatic alive, and it'll start off well for Crims. He finds Dupree. All the way back as he pushes away from A main, but they've got to regroup and back out. And Crimson only has 16 HP from that first exchange. The spray went both directions. Remember, he got the kill, but look at Glaive caught in no man's land. If that peak came over, he's got nowhere to hide. He's gonna spot this the gun. Kill. Oh, a misplay from Glaive. Those shots should have landed. And Twist has opened up the door for Fnatic because it's a two versus two. And they're both on the B site. It's Device alone. Kierby's not there. He's got the high HP, but he has it off. He's missed shots. That could have cost him. It does. What a shot from Crimson. Fnatic in the most magical way of pulling it back, but look at Kirby! Right time, right place! And Astralis get 19 in overtime to take map one. It seemed like they had checked out of it. Nothing was working for them, losing the 